In this video, I wanna talk about gear selection and its effect on power accuracy. Is a trainer more accurate in the small chain ring than the big chain ring or vice versa? Uh, in other words, how does flywheel speed affect power accuracy? Does it even matter? In the past few weeks, I did a lot of writing and I crunched through a lot of data from two different trainers, three different power meters, and two different bikes, and I did the same workout six times. That's, for, uh, that's over six hours of riding. And hopefully I can answer this question or maybe not, but let's dig into it. Or I probably should say, let's try to dig myself out of that rabbit hole. Hey, what's up guys? This is uh, Tariq here from uh, smartbiketrainers.com. Thanks for tuning in. If this is your first time here, this is where I talk about smart trainers and fitness tech. And if you want to learn more about indoor training and smart trainers and see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. And if you find this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button and tell your friends about this video and uh, share it on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, everywhere. So some chatters out there on, on social media and different forums that the trainer measurement might be more accurate in a smaller chain ring than the big chain ring. Basically, your smart trainer is much better at calculating power at low flywheel speed in erg mode than a, flywheel, than a fast flywheel speed. Uh, let me explain. Now, probably the reason for this is we did have some trainers this year from certain companies report different power at different flywheel speed. And one of them happened to be the Tax Neo or Tax Neo 2. And the Tax Neo has that reputation for being the most accurate or one of the most accurate trainers in the market. So when you are riding on your smart trainer and have your bike in a smaller gear, like a small chain ring in the front and the middle to bigger cog in the rear, the flywheel isn't going to be spinning as fast and the trainer will have an easier time adjusting resistance in erg mode to keep you at your target watts and you're gonna see smoother lines. Also, that's why many riders complain and wonder why their average speed is so much slower indoors in erg mode, but that's a different topic. However, if you use a bigger gear, the flywheel will spin a lot faster and the trainer will have a harder time adjusting resistance. And because of that, you will see more fluctuations in power like you see in this chart right here. Now, power lines might not be as smooth in the big ring as in the smaller gear, but this is not what I'm talking about here. I am more concerned about power accuracy. And I talked about erg mode and the differences between a small and a bigger ring in a little more details in this video right here. You can go and watch that one after you finish watching this video if you feel like binge watching erg mode stuff today instead of The Office on Netflix or any other show. And I will link to that video in the description below. So I ran a bunch of tests and the main one I did was a three by 10 minutes. And I wanted to look at power averages and I wanted to collect data from longer intervals and use three different gearing combinations. Uh, power fluctuates and different power meters measure power at different points. So I wanted to have a larger data sample to better measure the effect of flywheel speed on power measurement. Hopefully that makes sense. So I ran the test on the Neo2 and Wahoo Kicker 2018 model. The power meters I use, power to max on my tri bike, and I also have another power to max power meter on my road bike, the Osioma Pedals Duo that I switched between the two bikes. And to set a baseline, here's a ride I did. Uh, this is just a regular ride using all three of my power meters. So as you see, they were very close. The Asioma was a bit higher, which is expected because it's a pedal-based power meter and pedal-based power meters usually measure power closer to the source. And the averages for this ride were 180 for the Neo, 181 for power to max and 183 for Asioma. So on the kicker, I did the first 10 minutes in a small gear. The kicker average flywheel speed was around 13 miles per hour. The second interval flywheel speed averaged 19 miles per hour and the third interval in a big gear averaged flywheel speed 29 miles per hour. And when comparing the power measurement between all three, my power to max across all three intervals was off by only 0.41%. So that's really close and based on that we can say the flywheel speed or gear selection had no effect on power accuracy. But let's keep going. The Asioma was a different story. Even though it was calibrated, however, it was measuring between three to four and a half percent higher. So we're talking about eight to 11 watts higher for a 10 minute interval. Let's take a look at the Neo2. My power to max was consistent throughout all my rides. 
in a small gear or the lowest flywheel speed, it was reading a bit low. We're talking about one and a half to three percent lower across all three different workouts. The second interval in a in the big ring, the flywheel was reporting a speed of around 20 miles per hour, and power measurement was spot on. Then at a higher flywheel speed, it was a little bit higher, but not much higher. We're talking about three watts higher and was even spot on on the third ride I did. The Asioma, however, was reading a bit differently. It was spot on in the small ring, but measured a little bit higher at a higher speed or the, uh, on a bigger gear, but it was still within the acceptable range. But then up to 5% higher when going to a very big gear and the flywheel speed was uh, running around 27, 29 miles per hour. So looking at all three rides, I think we can say flywheel speed did not have, did not really have an effect on power accuracy when comparing it to my crank based power meter. However, when looking at the Asioma pedals, you might arrive at a different conclusion. Now, according to Favero, their pedals have instantaneous power system or as they call it, instantaneous angular velocity or IAV, meaning their pedals measure power instantaneously throughout the pedal stroke where other power meters calculate power using the average angular velocity per rotation. And according to Favero, this might introduce an additional error up to 4.5% compared to instantaneous uh, power calculation. If that is the case, then that might explain why the Asioma might measure a little bit higher or different than a smart trainer or even different power meter uh, in some situations. If you have an Asioma Duo, let me know if you notice the same trend. If you want to run the same workout I did, I will link to it down below and I will have it on smartbytrainers.com as well. So here are my takeaways. As long as you have a good trainer, meaning it's not a defect and calibrated correctly, it shouldn't really matter which gear you select. Power measurement should remain consistent regardless of your flywheel speed. When in erg mode, the general rule is to stay at a low gear uh, for a more responsive trainer. Whether you like the big chain ring or the small chain ring, shift to the middle of the cassette and keep your chain straight. This will also give you a quieter trainer and minimize the stress on your chain and that will give you the closest power measurement to your power meter regardless if you use a crank base or a pedal base power meter. Find a gearing combination that feels more natural to you and use that gearing combination. Stay away from uncommon gearing combination like a really big gear or a really small gear like I did for this test. Unless of course there is a floor wattage issue, uh, some trainers might have mechanical limitation that might prevent you from hitting your target watts during recovery intervals. In that case, switch to a smaller gear. Okay, hope you find this video helpful. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe. That's all I have. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.